In this video, I will explain you how to use behavior driven development, more specifically, how to write tests using BDD and using the Cucumber framework in Java. But it's actually a very powerful way to write unit tests in a user driven way using a textual language notation. As I have shown in a previous video, it is easy, it's straightforward to directly write unit tests. So here are some examples of the unit tests and I can run them using my unit testing framework. But it's also possible to write unit tests in a different way. Uh, I will maybe sh just show you here. So here I have created a set of tests that are actually written in a textual way and I can run these tests. Here it's called a feature. A feature is a collection of scenarios like end user tests that I would like to run. Uh, and these scenarios are expected to show the intended observable behavior of how to use arithmetic expressions over integers. Uh, so to do so, I will write my tests in a similar way as I tend to write the unit test, but using a completely different notation, namely a textual human readable notation. So for all of the tests, I can use a background. The background is the code that will be the run uh, for every before every single test. So in this case, for all of my scenarios, I will initialize a calculator. How to do this will be specified in some other code, but this is the natural language test that says before each scenario, initialize a calculator. And then the first scenario is an example of a user-driven test that we can have that's supposed to check how to add two integer numbers. So the scenario is as follows. If I provide an integer operation, uh, the operation is the plus operation, so the addition, and I provide as a first number, so first argument, a number 4 to the operation, I provide as a second argument number 5 to the operation, then the operation should evaluate to 9. So this means that if I take plus 4 and 5, the result should be 9. So that's for addition. For subtraction, the same thing. If I create an integer operation minus, I give it, I pass it two arguments, a first number 7 and 5, then the operation minus 7, 5 should evaluate to 2. For multiplication, the same. The multiplication of, five, uh, of 7 and 5 should be 35. The division of 7 and 5 should be 1. It's integer division, so 7 uh, divided by 5 is 1, and the rest of division is uh, 2. Um, if we want to print the sum of two integers, so there um, we know that we use three different notations in our code, infix notation, prefix notation, and prefix notation. So if I take as input the sum of two numbers 8 and 6, so I take an arithmetic expression of type plus with 8 and 6, then in infix notation the result that would be printed for this expression would be 8 plus 6, in prefix notation it would be plus 8, 6, and in postfix notation it's all it's 8, 6 plus. So this is, it really looks like a lang natural language text, so it's really surprising that uh, if I would run all of these tests, I uh, maybe I will just uh, show you, I can run all of these tests in this scenario, and then it's actually running them and it's providing results. So here, for example, you can see if I add two integer numbers, uh, then the operation evaluates it to 9, so everything is green, so the test has succeeded. So indeed, for each of these scenarios, a test is uh, run. For running the test, we use the JUnit framework. In this case, we use the JUnit 4 framework. Uh, so it's like running uh, unit tests, except that the tests are written in textual language uh, notation. You will see later how this works, uh, how we can implement this effectively, uh, by writing code that maps this natural language notation to actual Java code to convert it into unit tests. Um, what is important there is that although it is natural language notation, the keywords being used are essential. So feature, it's a predefined syntax for uh, this tool. Background, the same, given, the same, when, and, then. So all of these are, are keywords. Every scenario is typically supposed to always start with a given, given something, when something happens and something else happens, 
then this should be true. Uh, here the same, given something happens, when I do something and I do something else, then this should be true. Here's another scenario. This is uh, actually a, a scenario in which I can also pass a list of different numbers. So here is a, a list notation in natural language notation. I want to uh, calculate the sum of three different values. So if I provide as input a list of integer numbers, the list 8 to 2, then the sum of these numbers should be 12, the product should be 32, the difference should be 4, and the quotient should be 2. Uh, we can also have something that's called a scenario outline, which is like a template that allows us to generate multiple scenarios based on a set of examples. In this case, there's two different examples. So the scenario template is basically a scenario in which we use variables. The first variable is the first number, the second number, and the result. So here we just want to check addition of two integer numbers. It's basically the same type of test as the one that we show here except that we have parameterized this test by replacing 4, 5, 9 by, uh, by, uh, by variables. So here, if I add two numbers and 1 and 2, the result should be result. So the result of 4 and 5 should be 9, the sum of 5 and 3 should be 8. This I can do with a scenario outline and with providing examples. That's another example for the division. And here is a scenario outline where I even also parameterize the operation itself. So the operation will be a variable that's either plus, minus, multiplication or division. So there we can check whether the sum of 4 and 5 is 9, the subtraction of 8 and 5 is 3, the multiplication of 7 and 2 is 14, and the division of 6 and 2 is 3. So this is uh, an example of the syntax that we can use for running tests and for writing tests using uh, the notation provided by behavior driven development using a natural language notation. How does this work in practice? How do we do this? To do so, uh, we will have to add some class. Uh, basically, we have to first provide some auxiliary class that just runs the um, provided feature files using the Cucumber framework, which is the framework that allows us to use this type of particular notation uh, but we are actually running it with a JUnit that's uh, so just some copy uh, code that needs to be uh, put there to make the framework working uh, what is more important is how we can actually convert uh, each of these scenarios into actual Java code so that's uh, provided in the calculator steps class which you can see as a kind of mapping function from the domain specific uh, natural language user notation to the implementation specific java code that it will be actually run by the unit tests so we need code that takes these textual expressions like given an operation and that's converted into, into java code how does this work here i see uh, okay the first one is actually given i initialize a calculator this is the code that you can find in the background, given I initialize a calculator. This phrase can be, will be converted. So we have the given keyword that says, this is the code that we find in the feature file. Uh, I initialize a calculator, and this is the corresponding method. You can give any method name here, as long as the annotation corresponds. Uh, so this is basically the code that will be corresponding to this phrase. The initialize, initialization of a calculator is simply creating a new object of type calculator and store it in the value C, which is a calculator. The line, the other line here, given an inter, integer operation plus, what is the corresponding step file? Uh, here you can see, given an integer operation plus, basically plus is replaced here by an arbitrary string. Uh, so it could be plus, minus, division, or uh, multiplication. It's a parameterized string. Uh, this string will be a parameter of the Java method. And uh, what we want to do is an integer operation uh, will correspond to the creation of the corresponding operation object uh, in our Java code. So if we encounter as a string the plus string, then we will create a new object of type plus 
with a certain number of parameters. By default, we create an empty parameter list. We will add parameters later on. Minus will create a new object of type minus. Multiplication, a new object of type times. And division, a new ob object of type divides. Always with the same empty parameter list. Uh, next part, when I provide a first number and when I provide a second number, where can we find this? Here. When I provide a given number, uh, in this case, again, we see the phrase here. Um, maybe something noteworthy is that in this case, I have used some regular expression uh, in this sentence just to show you another way of interpreting sentences. Before, uh, the example that I used was we have a sentence and in that sentence we use a particular uh, string that will be converted uh, into a Java string here. Uh, instead of doing it like this, we can use a regular expression. So the regular expression starts with the cap here and it stops with the dollar here. And we, in, in this regular expression here we can see that the first parameter here is uh, dot star. So basically this is any sequence of uh, characters uh, that, that will be converted into the first parameter, which is a string. And then the other uh, part of the regular expression here is uh, any non-zero sequence of digits. Uh, and this will be converted into an integer value. And so when I provide a number, will be converted into the creation of a new object of type my number and this newly created my number will be added to the parameter list of the operation that we are currently creating which is uh, defined here so we have an operation with a parameter list in the parameter list we will store the we will store the number that we are creating uh, if you provide a first number, you will add it. If you provide a second number, you will add it again. So the actual string that we provide between a and number doesn't really matter. It always executes the same code, namely adding the number to the parameter list. So that's the idea of this uh, mapping function. So every single statement that you can find in the scenario file, when, then, given, will be converted into Java code that will be executed. And it's in this Java code, since uh, here our goal is to uh, make it convert into unit tests. That's why in every code for a then annotation, we will have some unit test asser uh, assertion like assert equals here or fail. Uh, for this then you also have assert equals or a fail. So every time uh, then is encountered in the scenario, it will be converted either in some assertion in JUnit testing or some failure. So this means that the JUnit framework will be able to interpret this as a simple uh, unit test. And so that's how we can take some natural language scenarios, convert this into Java code, and interpret this Java code as a unit test that is being run by the unit test framework. And that's why if now I take all of the tests and I just run, and now it will be running all unit tests plus all tests that are divided and that are defined in Cucumber. Uh, and here we can see the results of all tests. We can also see the results being run here. Uh, here we see all of the scenarios that have been executed. So as always, it is also possible to run these tests uh, without uh, using the IntelliJ environment. You can also do this directly from the command line just by uh, using Maven test. Or here I can also do the Maven run, Maven test for running all my tests. Uh, here you can see the results of all the scenario outlines. Uh, what we also see is when all of these tests have been run, uh, there is a Cucumber report being generated. So I have linked this to a website where you can actually see the report if you want to, if you don't have access or you don't want to run it directly in your um, IntelliJ environment. You can simply also open them on the web page. And here again, we have a nice visual report of the last time our code has been run. Okay, here I see it. Yeah. If I open this, here I see all the tests that I have run. 
uh, and they have all succeeded so for every single step in my feature file uh, it says a V if everything is okay so it's green everywhere uh, so everything has passed and we also see it as an even nicer visual uh, notation so all the tests of my feature file have been run and I have 100% 100% of correct execution let me just go to the console and do it from here so I could also just decide to run MVN test here so you'll see it's running the cucumber tests and then it's running all the scenarios and it's also doing test coverage and here you can see the link to the cucumber report that uh, will contain these tests uh, and I'm opening the tests here and indeed uh, that's the result of the tests.